Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to our Easter Sunday morning service. A few brief announcements. Uh, the picture frame is on the south lawn for family photos, and if you take a photo, uh, please tag St. Paul's in it for social media. Uh, St. Paul's is working at the VFW Fish Fry on Friday, April 22nd from 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, thanks to everyone who volunteered. Uh, the LWML Bible class is Monday evening at 7 p.m. And there's a VBS meeting on Saturday, April 23rd from 11 to 1 p.m. And we have a VBS donation box in the narthex. Uh, let's begin with our opening hymn, 463, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. <laughs> Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. 
Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And we will sing the intro it together. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in time power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode. The sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established, the Lord will reign forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. We humbly pray that we may live before you in righteousness and purity forever. <clears throat> through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading is from Job chapter 19. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord.
The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting there where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have yet I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for our hymn 461, I Know That My Redeemer Lives.
In the name of Jesus, amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The scripture reading for the sermon comes from Luke chapter 24. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified on the third, and on the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Jonah and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home, marveling at what had happened. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We have all experienced idle talk and tales. Maybe a friend of yours went on a fishing trip and says he caught a 300-pound catfish in the Mississippi, but it just got away as it came up to the boat. Or maybe someone jumped over top of a basketball hoop or hit a home run right out of the stadium. Fish stories and exaggerations go hand in hand with sports and a lot of our accomplishments. We hear stories every day that we take with a grain of salt. In the Gospel for Easter Sunday, Jesus' disciples thought that they were hearing a fish tale. In fact, Luke chapter 24, verse 11 says, These words seemed like an idle tale, and they did not believe the women. The Gospel begins with the women going to Jesus' tomb on the first day of the week, on Sunday, and this is why we as Christians typically worship on Sunday, because Jesus has risen from the dead on Sunday. The women brought spices with them to embalm the body of Jesus, because they were unable to properly prepare Jesus' body for burial because of the Sabbath. The women also had another obstacle to deal with. The tomb was sealed. None of them were strong enough to break the seal. None of them were strong enough to roll away the stone. Imagine to their surprise when they saw the seal broken and the tomb rolled away. They might have thought that King Herod or the Pharisees or the Romans, the enemies of Jesus, had taken away his body, perhaps to desecrate it. The women went into the tomb but did not find the body. They didn't understand what happened. They were dumbfounded. Then two angels of the Lord appeared to them. They told the woman that Jesus has risen. And the angels reminded the women what Jesus had said, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and rise again on the third day. An important note in this gospel reading, the women remembered the words of Jesus. And we too need to be reminded of the words of Jesus. The women who heard Jesus teach forgot his words at the time of the crucifixion. The busyness of life the troubles of our own lives can also make us forget Jesus' words. Just like the women, we need to be reminded Jesus' words. The reading says that Mary Magdalene, Jonah, Mary the mother of James, and the other women went to tell the apostles what they had seen. And after the women told the apostles everything they had seen, 
The apostles considered the women's words to be idle tales. You can just imagine how this went. The apostles are just say, thinking to themselves, these women, they have no idea what they're talking about. So much for the heroes of the gospel. They did not believe. The very people that Jesus spent the most time with here on earth did not believe that he rose. And this is why the scriptures say to us, Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Peter, after hearing the women, runs to the tomb. We heard in the a gospel account from St. John how Peter and John were running together, but John outran Peter. Peter was older and just not as in good of shape as John. But notice Peter is the one who is bold enough to enter the tomb. And when Peter entered the tomb, he saw the linen cloths, and he left marveling. Peter saw the empty tomb, and he believed. What seemed like an idle word, what seemed like a fairy tale, was the truth. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now to many people in our world today, the resurrection of Jesus is simply an idle tale. None of us have seen a person rise from the dead, and I imagine if any of us did, we probably would be afraid. It's difficult for us to believe that Jesus rose from the dead. There are numerous television programs, documentaries, news stories, and articles that come out this time of year trying to explain what really happened to Jesus. What is the real story? The world doubts and does not believe that Jesus rose from the dead. To the world, the resurrection of Jesus is an idle tale. Yet for us Christians, as we celebrate Easter on this most holy time of the year, it is the day that our Savior rose from the dead, having conquered sin, death, and the devil. You see, the resurrection of Jesus changes everything for us. For all of us who have lost loved ones, those who have fallen asleep in Jesus before us, the resurrection of Jesus means that we shall see them again, and that right now they are worshiping Jesus in heaven. For those of us whose bodies are sick and hurt and failing, the resurrection of Jesus changes everything. For we know that one day we shall rise from the dead with a glorified and perfect body. The resurrection of Jesus changes everything for us. And in the death of Jesus, our sins were answered for on the cross. Jesus bore the punishment of our sin and in his resurrection, Jesus shows us that he has conquered all that would destroy us. More than that, the resurrection of Jesus shows us that we too shall rise again. St. Paul speaks about this in 1 Corinthians 15. He says that Christ is the first fruits of the dead. Because Christ shows us the way, we too will rise. Death is described merely as a sleep. Those who have died will be awakened by Jesus, just as we awaken someone in sleep. Jesus will awaken our loved ones, and he will awaken us from death, from the sleep of death. Death is perhaps the thing that people fear most in this world. We do all sorts of things to avoid death, to make ourselves safe, and to protect ourselves from sickness and injury. Death is the enemy of everything that lives. Death is our enemy. And Jesus came to destroy all our enemies. The last enemy to be destroyed is death itself. Jesus' resurrection has dealt death a mortal blow. Jesus put death to death. And now all creation longs for the coming of the sons of God, that is for you and me to be resurrected from the dead. In the gospel reading, 
The women had forgotten the words of Jesus. And like the women, we too need to be reminded of Jesus' words. We need to remember that Jesus came to suffer for our sins and to rise again on the third day. In our everyday lives, we work to remember things. We work to remember procedures, directions. We stick sticky notes on our computer monitors to remember passwords. In our lives as Christians, we also need to work at remembering the words of Jesus. Now the big example that everyone mentions is what happens if a totalitarian government comes and takes away our Bible? All you would have left is your memory of the scriptures. And while that may be true, we don't need anything as a government change or a totalitarian state to make us forget the words of Jesus. When we face sudden tragedy, when we face an accident, when we face fear from any number of things, fear from the results of a medical test, or fear from having hearing bad news about our family, or fear for our family's future and their well-being. It is easy for us to forget the words of Jesus. And one of the reasons that we celebrate Easter is to remember and to implant the words of Jesus in our hearts and our minds. Namely, that Jesus would rise on the third day. When Jesus' word is in our hearts and our minds, even when tragedy or fear strikes us, we will remember Jesus' words and be comforted. We will remember the open tomb. And even when our memory fails and we are forgetful, our risen Savior Jesus remembers you. He made us in his own baptism. Baptism represents the resurrection where when we go into the water, our sinful nature is drowned. And when we come out of the water, we arise resurrected, born anew as a child of God. Jesus being raised from the dead means that you and your loved ones will rise from the dead with your own body when Jesus returns to destroy the last enemy, to destroy death. We do not believe in idle tales, for we know and believe the open tomb, because Jesus lives. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.
please rise for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, on this glorious day, fill your people with a holy fear at the resurrection of your Son, that we would tremble no longer before the grave, but rejoice and live in the truth of your power to save. Lord, in your mercy. Let us hold fast to the word preached to us, that receiving it with joy, we may take our stand in it and be saved by it. Hinder all who would sow doubt into our hearts and grant us courage to confess its truth in our life and conversation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Bless Joseph, our president, and all who make and administer our laws. Frustrate the forces of evil and do not let our leaders cooperate with them or further their goals. Guard our armed forces as they stand watch for us at home and abroad. Let them serve with honor and integrity. Lord, in your mercy. Have mercy on the sick and those in any need, especially those we name in our hearts and those from our congregation. For Elaine, the family and friends of Fran, for Mike, for Ruth, for the family and friends of Jean, for Gigi and Sharon. Let the dawning light of the new creation in Christ sustain them in faith. In accord with your will, grant them renewed health, a foretaste of their eternal healing in him. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Give us joy in your son's great victory feast as he shares it with us from this altar. In the eating of his true body and the drinking of his precious blood in faith, overcome our sin by his forgiveness and swallow up our death in his life, that we may be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Comfort those who mourn with the truth of Christ's empty tomb, that in the midst of their grief they may abide in the hope of his resurrection. Uphold them in faith as they await the day when you will wipe every tear from their eyes. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We join today in singing eternal alleluias with innumerable angels in the festal gathering, with the assembly of the firstborn in heaven, and with the spirits of the righteous made perfect. We bring these petitions before you, dear Father, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we receive our gifts and offerings.
please rise for the offertory. your hearts let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is truly good right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you holy lord almighty father everlasting god and most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your son jesus christ the very paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world by his dying he has destroyed death and by his rising again he has restored to us everlasting life Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup 
is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Take a drink of the true blood of Christ to shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and life everlasting. Depart in peace. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. The true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ. Take 
the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ. the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism.
the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat, the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat, the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat, the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat, the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Please rise for the canticle, Thank the Lord.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated for our closing hymn, 457, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. And on stanza four, please rise. His love, Hallelujah! Praise Him, all ye heavenly hosts, Hallelujah! Father, Son, and Holy Ghost,